CERN receives thousands of applications for internships. I never thought I'd actually get in, but here's how I did it. Hey guys, I'm Leighton. I'm a software engineering student at Ho West University of Applied Sciences in Bruges, Belgium. A few months ago, I applied for an internship at CERN, one of the most prestigious research centers in the world, and I got in. In this video, I will share exactly how I applied, my interview experiences, and tips for anyone who wants to work at CERN too in the future. So let's go. So let's start why. I always thought CERN was only for physicists, engineers, but then I realized that you have a huge need for software engineers to, <clears throat> to work in their systems, right? When I saw the internship opportunity on their website, I knew I had to try. It seemed impossible and I thought I would never get it, but here I am. Where did I exactly find the internship of CERN? basically on their careers portal. So I was just looking up for CERN internships and the first link that popped up was their own careers portal. I scrolled a bit, I saw a lot of staff and graduation um, positions, but then I saw like three listings and one of them applied for my domain, IT, and I had a look at it. The only problem I saw is, what, is that they require like long-term internships minimal six months up to 12 months with an extension possible uh, which is one or two months as well and the problem was my university is requiring an internship internship for three to four months so i just applied and forgot about it even if i would get in i never thought my university would allow me to be this long in another country for an internship while other students do a three, four month internship. So when applying for the position, I focused on my strength in Java and React. Since CERN looks for people, especially for my case, looked for people with solid programming skills in that stack. They do not require any crazy knowledge, but at least the fundamentals, right? Because in my position, they use React for the front end, obviously, and Java Spring for the back end. And I also highlighted my experience with those languages slash frameworks uh, on my resume because it will stand out more and maybe have a higher chance to get passed by the screening process because you get filtered by a computer at first before the recruiters actually look into the pool to select you. So your resume is a great start to look at. And if you have any questions, I can help you. Just leave a comment below and I will answer everything. But the moral of the story is, if you are applying for any position, doesn't matter which job, make sure to tailor your resume to fit the role. So when exactly did I hear back from, from a recruiter or a HR person or anyone at CERN? Um, this is quite interesting because I applied sometime and I only got some answer back like after two or three months, I think, which was pretty late in my opinion. and. I already forgot about it. So I suddenly saw like an email popping up in my inbox and I was like, oh, so it's still active because I thought like, hello Leighton, um, your profile stands out uh, for this position. We would like to plan an interview. So notice there could be a coding test involved. And I was kind of stressed when I read that in the email because I was scared of lead code type questions because I never practiced them and I did sometimes try to do the easy ones and to be honest I sucked at them so I just did it because some friends of mine cheered me up and told me to just do it even if you fail you still gain some knowledge and experience in return right because that's valuable as well for the future usage of other interviews and stuff. So then I thought, so the first interview I actually did was called the Sondra interview, which is nothing related with uh, any CERN personnel. It's just you and your computer with the webcam and a mic turned on. They basically track your whole PC to monitor you, to check if you are not just looking up stuff and making shit up. That was the first interview that I did and I never knew what a Sonra test was. But then I, after the interview, I actually knew because obviously I had to 
do the interview. So what it is, is basically like four to five questions you will have to answer in a time frame. So I think you default, you get like two minutes per question to prepare. You see the question popping up on the screen. Then you have some time to think of what your answer will be. And you could answer this in English or in French because Geneva, uh, their main language is French, but don't be worried. I can't speak French well. I just speak the very, very basics and they still selected me as a possible candidate. Um, so back to the interview is, it's just like nothing too fancy. It's nothing code related. It's just behavioral questions as in, have you ever had an X situation at some company or some timestamp of your life? And how did you solve it or what did you do or what would you do? So I answered those questions with the star method, uh, which is basically a method to structure your answer um, very easily and clear for the people that have to screen you. So then after two weeks, I basically received uh, another email from an actual recruiter, a possible recruiter that had interest in my profile. Somehow I passed the Sondra test, which then allows you to get into a pool of possible candidates where recruiters can select you. Then I received an email about a hello Leighton, your profile stands out. We would like to interview you. So then I had an interview with three other developers or two actually, two or three, doesn't matter, uh, where they basically tested your technical knowledge. So nothing in general, except for questions like, um, what job experience do you have, um, internships, what did you use, what did you develop, how did you came up with the solutions, what were your contributions to the projects. So make sure you can actually explain your projects well, because if you can't do that, that doesn't project any positive view towards them. Make sure you freshen up your knowledge about your project, but mostly that shouldn't be the case because you actually did the project. So yeah. Then they asked me some Java, um, some Java Spring and some React and databases and basic algorithms, questions, uh, nothing too fancy, nothing lead code related. However, I had to do a hacker rank before this stuff um, together with the Sondra test, which is basically just a, a technical exercise, not really lead code ish, but not fully a project, it's a combination. Uh, it's been too long to actually remember what it was, so I can't elaborate any more on that. So the interview was not easy, but also not very hard um, in comparison to other manga or fan companies, obviously. Um, but still, it was it was a nice, nice excuse to brush up my knowledge about the fundamentals of some react uh, stuff because I know how to use it, but I didn't know how to explain it. And that's quite a, a, a common skill they are looking for uh, in any developer that they can actually explain what they are doing and um, how you can use it, of course. Note that it's like hard because you only have a notepad or paint to draw or explain your stuff with. Um, so you don't have an IDE coming up with suggestions of syntax. And I was quite struggling with the stream operator syntax to, to actually have the right syntax. So I just straight up tell them, okay, I know you guys are looking for a stream operator instead of for loop, because that was a, some sort of question, but I don't really recall the, the syntax of it. And they said, it's fine. Just explain what you're doing and what you're thinking instead of actual code and pseudocode is also very good as long as they get your thought process right. So yeah, that was the trickiest part for me, the notepad stuff. So not having an IDE. Yeah, I managed to get an internship. So after that, I waited for a couple of weeks and then I received, I was um, selected as the best candidate of the pool they interviewed. So that was quite, a, quite an achievement and a compliment. Um, I couldn't believe it. So I went to my university and actually asked them, Hey, I got accepted by CERN. Um, is it possible to do this internship as they were looking for a three to four month internship, my university. And they 
then said no one year internship is way too long we cannot do that and that was my downfall because i was this close to my dream and i would get rejected not by cern but by my own university because of the time period and i just said yes okay it's it's a bummer uh, i'll try to look another internship then so then my professor who wrote my recommendation letter um told me about hey Leighton, i really found it unfair that you got rejected uh, by ho west due the time period and not actual by cern because of some lack of knowledge or something right so then he said i could maybe tell some people higher up to look into your situation and maybe give you permission to actually have an internship this long in switzerland in another country and um, because it, it's also a good a good thing for my university to tell maybe other future students about hey we had a student at cern um, because that's good marketing right um, so then the process initiated and after quite some while of meetings communication uh, emails all that stuff they allowed me to have an internship so here i am and i'm quite thankful to the persons that helped me for achieving this because it's quite an unusual situation i was in so i got some advice um for you guys um for any other internship or at cern it doesn't matter apply even if you think you won't get in if you feel unqualified because imposter syndrome is very real and i have the same feeling i still have it during my internship it's quite normal just try to ignore it and learn as much as you can and follow your dreams because if you never follow your dreams you you will regret it after some time in your life right so just follow your dreams and ignore the imposter syndrome the second one is to highlight your software skills um for a certain specific don't think you need any physics or research experience because I never followed any physics course um, or I never wrote any theses or papers uh, and I never did any of that. I just had hands-on experience with uh, Java, React, other languages, programming in general. And apparently that's enough. So don't think you need to be some kind of physics genius to work as a software engineer at CERN. Third one is to practice the technical interview questions. Um, practice as in lead code to want to harm right uh, do it if you want um but it's not needed for my case i can't really tell if you want needed if you apply it certain but in my case it wasn't needed and um, what i did is basically looked up some fundamentals of java spring uh, react so i could easily explain my thought process and having the definitions ready of if they ask what are the dependencies array and the use effect and um, what does it trigger uh, what stage does it uh, re-render the component in or something um, so yeah i brushed up that knowledge so uh, make sure you do it too so the fourth one is showcase your projects because projects are valuable and especially in the beginning of your career because you don't have any experience to show at least in my case so your projects is your best shot to actually show them hey i can actually do some stuff right so make sure to redirect them to your GitHub, the GitLab, whatever you are using. So the last one is very straightforward and very important and it's very simple, but it's just to show confidence. Be confident in your application, trust yourself um, don't be insecure during the interviews because if they see someone insecure or hesitating, then it might not feel good for them to hire that applicant if you understand me because if you show any insecurities during your process of thinking and especially in coding tests they might think you don't need you don't actually know your stuff but you just studied it and you're not relying on your own knowledge right so just be confident and trust yourself so that's how i got into cern as a software engineering intern if you have any questions feel free to drop them below in the comment section like my video to push the algorithm because this will be my first uh, video on my channel and make sure to subscribe and push the notifications bell on and um, so you will get a notification if i drop another video because i will this is not my l uh, last video 
I will be posting vlogs about my experience in Geneva or Switzerland. I will visit Zurich and Bern as well. So I might vlog that. I don't know. And I will definitely make a software, like a day in the life of a software engineer intern at CERN video because I never seen anything like that yet on YouTube, um, at least on CERN, because there are a, a ton of them about Google and Amazon and other big companies. But I think it's quite interesting to see how I do my stuff at CERN. It's nothing too fancy. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you the next